Hey guys, welcome back. Here is part two of how I achieved this emerald green layered look. This particular video is part two. In part one, we focused on how I achieved the color and how I attempted twice to get this color. And in part two, we will be focusing on the full installation and the styling process. Here we have my beautiful cousin Cheryl. She was just as excited as I was to try this colour, so we definitely had to get her in to try it out. I slicked back Cheryl's edges using Gummy's edge control wax and then oiled her scalp in preparation for the stocking cap method. And here we have our unit. I place it on her head, making sure that the fit is fine. And then I go ahead using the edge protector, making sure that I wipe off any debris of makeup and prepare the stocking cap. I go ahead and I use my bold hold to mark out where her hairline is and then I spread it using a popsicle stick. I then decided to use Eben's Wonder Lace spray to see if it works just like Got To Be does. I then go in with my blow dry on a core heat setting and dry the cap until it turns clear. When tinting the lace, I use Maybelline's Fit Me foundation in the colour 460 to match Cheryl's complexion. Now that the cap is dry, I cut off the excess cap that we won't need. Using the same foundation shade, I brush the colour into the cap. When placing the wig on your client's head, you want to make sure that your client is holding the lace firmly on both sides. Throughout the video, you might see a few emojis pop up. That's because I'm censoring out my nephew who's in the background. Cutting around your client's ears, you want to make sure that you're not cutting too much of the lace, but just enough so that the lace isn't hiding the ears. When measuring the elastic band to my client's head, I usually measure it to where my client's ears start on one side to the other and then I cut the band. And here I am sewing the elastic band to the cap. Please let me know if you'd like to see a more detailed video on how I position the elastic band into a wig cap. Here I'm making sure that the lace is covering the stocking cap underneath, so I'm moving the lace about one centimetre 
just in front of the stocking cap. If you guys take anything from my frontal install videos, it's that what you do on one side, you must do to the other. This ensures that the hair is completely symmetrical. After three layers dry clear, I then carefully place the lace into the glue. I then go in and I glue the sides. cut off the excess lace first before gluing like I did on the sides however with HD lace I realized that it does this weird ripple thing so what I do is I leave the excess lace then carefully place it into the glue and then when it's semi dry I then cut it off Using a little bit of glue and a rat tail comb, I then glue down any spots which I may have missed. I then carve out baby hairs and the sideburns in preparation for the lace melt. The product I use for the lace melt is the VO5 Mega Hold Mousse and then I go in with the Ebon Wonder Lace Adhesive Spray. After I work the product into the lace, I then go in with my Barber Strips. This helps to absorb the moisture very quickly and then I go in with my lace melt elastic band. So now it's time to prepare the hair for styling. Firstly, I carve out my parting line with a hot comb and wax stick. I then lightly mist the hair with water so that it's damp and then I go in with my VO5 blow dry spray. I absolutely love and recommend this product when creating volume curls. So 
what I'm doing is depositing the spray all over the hair so that way when I blow dry it, it gives me the volume that I'm looking for when curling the hair. going in with your blow dryer you want to make sure that you're working in sections that way you ensure that the hair is completely dry before styling If you ever want voluminous layered curls then I highly consider you layer your hair. So what I'm doing first is creating face shaping bangs and then I go in and cut off the straggly bits at the end of the hair. I then section her hair straight down the middle and then I then add my layers. When doing this, I angle the hair in about a 45 degree angle and then gently glide my scissors creating the layers. After parting each section, I make sure to grab the top section of the last piece that I just cut and use that as a guide when cutting around the circumference of her head. When working with sharp shears, you want to make sure that you're careful. I ended up cutting myself a little bit, hence why I am wearing the blue latex gloves. Now here comes the fun part, the styling. I recently bought the T3 body waver. I'm not sure what the measurements are, but I'll add it in the description bar below. And for this product, I ended up spending £125. In my 10 plus years of doing hair, I have never paid so much for a hot tool. So I really wanted to try out this product and see if it's worth the price. Here I am showing all the products I use for the styling process, which will be listed in the description bar below. It took me a little bit to get used to the T3 body waver, but I ended up loving the results, which you will see at the end. I don't think it was worth the price that I paid for it, however, I did really like the results I got. Okay. I strongly advise that you use curling clips when curling hair. This helps when waiting for the hair to cool down and I find that it helps my curls last longer.
So quick rule when curling hair, you want to make sure that you're curling away from your client's face. So on the left hand side, I'll be curling counterclockwise and on the right hand side, I'll be curling clockwise. So now that we are done curling the hair, it's time to now style the baby hairs and the sideburns. When taming my baby hairs, I use my VA5 gel spray. I then gently take down the pins, getting ready for the comb through. I then spray a wide tooth comb with a holding spray and then I comb the hair backwards. After combing the hair backwards, I then bring the whole hair forward and then you want to use this opportunity to style the hair how you'd like. Sometimes I have to go over the curls again just to make sure that I'm getting the style that I want. For the clean finished look, I then tame the flyaways with my Tame It wax stick. Me being a little bit of a perfectionist, I'm still going in with the curling iron, making sure that the hair is exactly like how I imagine it in my mind.
I am officially obsessed with this look, the curls, the colour, it was worth all the headache I experienced during this whole process. Now let's all take in this slow-mo action. Ugh, yes, I love this look so much. We are now nearing the end of this video. If you have made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in into this emerald green hair saga. I am so grateful for all the support and if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe, comment, share and I will catch you in my next one.